Hi, welcome to Naming in an AI Age with Namestormers Creative Consultants. My name is Adelaide Brown, and I have the pleasure of putting these podcasts together with our founder and CEO, Mike Carr, to create and build a community curious about creating native naming development with the introduction of new technologies and research techniques. Mike, can you tell us a little bit about the background behind the creation of the Namestormers company? You bet. And we were terrible, terrible namers when we got started. So we have made a lots of mistakes. So back in 1985, we left uh, a subsidiary of Nielsen, the market research folks. And four of us started this new company. We had no idea what we wanted to do. One of the guys had written a naming program on an IBM uh, mainframe for Anderson Clayton Foods. So we thought, hey, PCs are pretty new. Why don't we write the first naming software for a PC? But we didn't really know for sure we were going to do that. And so we came up with our own name, which was Salanon. And Salanon is a real mathematical word that represents four semicircles. And since there were four of us that started the company, we thought, that's pretty cool. But can you imagine a naming company calling themselves Salanon? It was awful. <laughs> and so we had to get away from that pretty darn quick. But anyway, we got started and we wrote the first uh, commercially available naming software available on a PC in the world and uh, sold thousands of copies from there. So that's a little bit about how we got started. That's super exciting and quite the journey. I, they say practice makes perfect. So it seems like y'all have gotten enough practice under your belt, selling on with a, a bit of a rough start, but look at you For now. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about these copies that were sold and how that developed the AI kind of module platform developed into the consulting company you hold now. Yeah, we actually had an AI module back in 1985-86 wow. in Namer. Namer was the, the name of our software product. It actually ran in DOS. This was before Windows really was a thing. And we didn't really understand what AI was because it really wasn't a thing. But yeah. the way the adaptive learning model worked was you taught it. And so it would throw up a name and then you would, you would rank it or rate it, you know, good or bad. And then it would sort of try to learn from, okay, it's, it's seen, you know, 15 bads and five goods. Let's try to give you as the user more names in line with your preferences. The problem was it took forever to learn, right? It, it had to ask literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of names. So it got to be very tedious. So it was a disaster when it comes to what artificial intelligence, chat, GPT, generative AI can do today. But it did lead us to a Windows version, which came out a few years later called NamePro. And it had more sophisticated databases. It had better data. It had some new methodologies and again, still artificial intelligence, AI really wasn't discussed. It wasn't a, a buzzword at all, but we were moving in that direction. What we found, however, was clients and customers and folks that needed a name needed more than just what a software tool could give them. Uh, they had trouble figuring out, well, is this a good name or a bad name? Mm -hmm. uh, does this name pass the hurdles in terms of trademark screening and linguistic screening? Does it work with my target? You know, would they like this name? And so they ended up just calling us and saying, hey, we either love or don't love or maybe sort of like your software, but why don't you just guys do this for us? So that's sort of how we segued into the consulting business, even though we started as a software company and even with some software that was sort of the, the beginnings of an AI solution. And y'all started with four of you having Correct. left Nielsen but that's not the case anymore. Can you tell me about the team evolution and the kind of company you've built now? Yeah, we had a, we had a team of of folks that were all pretty senior. Uh, Dan Stone was the the chairman of, of our new company, and he had been a successful entrepreneur at an older company called Dan Ray. Brilliant mathematician. I mean, he would read you know advanced calculus books for fun at night. I mean, that kind yeah. of a mind. <laughs> And then we had two other guys, Philip Lindsley and Richard Dowd, that also were very smart analytical types. Uh, but they really liked the data aspects of it and, and moving in, in more of an analytics direction and didn't feel that naming held their passion as much as some of the other things that we were working on. So we spun off in 1993 
and started Namestormers as an independent entity and then have sort of been going forward from there. Nice. So tell me what kind of work have you been doing? What's been a favorite project you've had? Just a couple little fun facts about Namestormers as it stands today. We've had some truly amazing clients. And I think, you know, we try to share our learnings with clients. And at first we were awful at doing everything, right? The names we came up with were terrible. They didn't really fit the client's positioning or branding. Uh, they didn't dovetail nicely in with their whole messaging campaign. But in working with some of our early clients, I think we got a lot better at that. And we would try to share with them our perspectives. And we, quite frankly, we, we just listened a lot, right? We listened and we asked a few key questions and we sort of learned from there. So one of the examples is that, you know, Circuit City came to us years ago. I mean, they're no longer even in business. And they were sort of a big box electronics retailer like Best Buy. Yeah. And they said, we want to get into the used car business. And we just thought that was a bit odd. <laughs> so we said, why? And they said, because it's a sleazy experience right now, right? Nobody feels like they're getting a good deal or very few people feel like they're getting a good deal when they buy a used car, right? You just yeah. never know, right? You go, well, did I pay too much? Is this thing going to fall apart? Yeah. And they felt like there was an opportunity to add a degree of professionalism. And so they were going to really improve that whole experience. So we came up with a lot of names for them. And one of the names was CarMax. And so CarMax today is a fairly well-known brand in that space. You know, they've got multiple locations around the country and, and perhaps even outside of the country now, I'm not sure. And Circus City went out of business. But the key to that project was they wanted something that was short, that was easy to say and spell. And most importantly, you could see on a sign when you're driving down the road, often on an interstate. This was before Google Maps. This was yeah. before you know, people could really just Google and say, well, give me directions to the CarMax. And it was so new that they felt, hey, something that's short that sort of says it's we're about automobiles. So cars sort of relate to automobiles. And then Max, you know, big inventory, right? Or maximizing our customer service or maximizing the professionalism that you're going to experience in a very new, novel, and exciting way when you walk through the doors at a CarMax dealership. And all those things they were able to deliver upon. So the name wasn't maybe super inspired, but it was a name that worked very well for them and delivered on some of the key criteria they had at that point in time uh, when they really started this thing. Yeah. Wow. That, I mean, a few locations feels like an understatement. I feel like I see a CarMax every time I get on the highway, but I feel like that anecdote really speaks so intentionally to this statement you have on the website to the what's in a name opportunity. We create product company and service names that help you get the opportunities you deserve. So I'm excited to dig into this project, build out a couple more, have some more conversations and um, learn more about your experiences as we keep recording, keep podcasting. So stick around and we'll have new episodes coming out once a week. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Adelaide. Bye, Mike. See ya. Join the Namestormers team next Tuesday on Naming in an AI Age as we discuss how the podcast actually got its name. We'll talk to you then.